Most families have some experience with mental health problems and in most cases the problems overlap with other challenges whether it's substance abuse, the criminal justice system or the stress of raising a family. These are among the concerns that will be addressed in workshops October 18th at the annual state convention of the National Alliance on Mental Illness or NAMI. Joining us is the executive director of NAMI for Massachusetts, Lori Martinelli. Thank you very much. For being Thank with you us, for having me. First of all, when I say convention, people might be thinking this is just for professionals or advocates, but, but I guess this is for everybody. Absolutely, yes, right. There We get usually about 400 people, and there's family members. There are some professionals, but they are definitely in the minority. There are peers or people with lived experience. So anyone who is touched by mental illness, as you pointed out, is almost everyone, <laughs> should come. You have a number of workshops being planned. Uh, one of them is about something very fundamental, and, and this is a workshop that's being given in Spanish. That's correct. So we're pretty excited. It's uh, what services are out there if you're a Spanish-speaking individual or Spanish-speaking family because uh, you have a hard enough time finding what services are out there if you're dealing with someone with mental illness. And if you put the language on top of it, it's even harder. And it's language combined with uh, cultural sensitivity, pe people who know the background of these families, the countries they come from. Exactly. So on the panel are going to be uh, all women, and they're all Spanish speakers. One works at the Leahy Clinic. So these are people who are in the system, so to speak, but they are bilingual, and they'll be talking about the services that they offer at their, their hospitals or other services in the community. You have a workshop on who do I call in a crisis. It sounds like it's almost too s uh, simple and, and fundamental, but I guess a lot of people are confused about this. Oh, definitely. You know, who do I call in a crisis is very basic, but that is what's needed. A lot of times family members and parents are, are having a crisis and they aren't understanding it and they don't really know the first thing about who they should be calling. Well, we, we usually say call 911 in an emergency, but a, a crisis can be different from an emergency. So explain what this means if it's yes, got to do with mental illness. Yes, um, we actually advise people not to call 911 if they're having a crisis because oftentimes who may show up, the first responders and police may or may not have training on how to deal with someone who's having a psychiatric crisis. So if, they're, if they have, if the individual has mass health, which a lot of people do, then they can call what's their, an, another number, which is their emergency service provider. You have a, a topic, uh, a workshop topic on the teenage brain. Now, a lot of uh, parents might have a, a, a rough patch when their kids become teenagers, but uh, that's normal. So how, how do you distinguish that from something else? Well, I think the teenage brain, the point there is that the teenage brain is forming. It's not an adult brain. So you may do things as a child or an adolescent that you wouldn't do as an adult because your brain is not fully formed. So the presenter there is from the Department of Youth Services, and she's going to be talking about the outreach that she's doing in the community about the teenage brain because it is different. And, and of course, uh, parents uh, can maybe find out about places where they can get some kinds of help for their children. Oh, exactly. The, yeah, the whole day is sprinkled with these are the services that are out there that you might want to access that could help you. Uh, now, a more serious problem maybe is the overlap between uh, mental illness and uh, problems in the criminal justice system. You have a workshop on that. Yes, we do. And um, that is an issue that affects a lot of families. We like to say, or we, we don't like to say, but I think it's true that most people with mental illness will find themselves in the criminal justice system at some point in their life. They don't belong there, but that's how society treats them. So this uh, workshop will deal with some of, the, uh, some of the tips and some of the best practices that should exist in the criminal justice system. And on the panel is the chief of police of Somerville, and he's going to be talking about what they're doing in Somerville. And then we also have Judge Coffey, who runs a mental health court in here in Boston in the West Roxbury District Court. And that is a, a life save, saver for people with mental illness. To, if they get mixed up in the criminal justice system, to be able to have their case heard before a judge who's in a criminal, I mean, excuse me, a mental health court makes all the difference because then the whole focus of the court is what can we do to help you? How can we help you get, keep out of trouble in the future and get the services in place that you need? So it's a whole different focus. We also recently have in Boston a special court for veterans. Exactly. And, and you're going to be addressing veterans problems at this conference. Yes, we have another workshop that is uh, veteran services in your community. And we're going to have a couple of vets speak at it. We're having the head of mental health services at the Bedford VA, Dr. Charles Drebin. 
Drebbing, who will be speaking at it. So yes, we want to be able to talk about services that exist in the community for veterans. Another thing that goes on at this convention is uh, you're trying to uh, make connections with people and, and motivate them a bit to, to carry on the advocacy. Explain what, what that means. So yes, it is a day of networking. It's a day of getting excited and hearing from other people. Our keynote speaker is going to be from the Department of Mental Health and he'll be talking about recovery. We do have a workshop on advocacy. So we really hope that people will not only feel that they've been educated in a way that they weren't before about mental illness, but they'll also be motivated to do something about it, whether it's writing a letter to their local, to their paper or getting involved in their uh, community in different ways. And there's one other constituency involved here in, in these workshops, and that's got to do with substance abuse. Now, maybe there are people who say, that, well, there's someone in the family who has a substance abuse problem, but before that, you know, they, they didn't have mental illness. But I guess once you're in the substance abuse, it's, it's not a distinction with a difference. Well, you're right, and there's a lot of people, they overlap. People with mental illness often have a substance use problem. So, But this, uh, this workshop really was created in response to the governor declaring a public health emergency in the state with the opiate, opioid addictions. So this is going to be talking about uh, substance abuse. There's a new law that the legislature passed that hopefully is going to force insurance companies to address substance abuse in a little more meaningful way. It won't go into effect until next year, but it was passed this year. So there's a lot of good, there is a lot of exciting things we want to report on. Now, I, I know there was a sense of uh, crisis behind that, Laura, a lot of leaders calling for, for action, but I guess when it comes to getting services, getting access, uh, it, it takes a lot of just everyday people working together to, to get something done if you have to go to the state house. Exactly. You know, that's what NAMI is really about. NAMI is a membership organization, and while we do want to educate people about mental illness, we really want them to add their voices to the whole advocacy effort, and they can do that in many different ways that NAMI talks to them about. Well, so this is going to be on October 18th, and what's the uh, location? And it's time? going to be up in Lowell. It's the UMass Lowell Inn and Conference Center. And it's a lovely venue. It is a little bit of a haul from people from Boston, but I do think it's worth it because the workshops that we offer are going to be so timely and so informative. And if people want more details about this, you've got a website that they can we check have, into? Yes, we have a website, www.namimass.org. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. From NAMI Mass, Laurie Martinelli will have more news in just a moment.